All right, the name of the week reporting, Disney stock. Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Adam. You are watching Unlimited Options Investing, and let's talk earnings. All I saw is that Disney stock is up after hours, I believe, to about $160. I don't know anything else. I don't know the numbers. I just came up here to start recording. Let's take a deeper dive. So if this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard and hit that subscribe button here at Unlimited Options Investing. We talk everything from stocks, crypto, options, and ETFs. We're investing for the long term. As always, smash that like button. Let's get started. All right, Disney Park business roars back as company beats expectations. Stock soars. So Disney reported earnings for the fiscal first quarter and beat analyst estimates. Disney Plus subscriptions beat estimates, adding nearly 12 million subscribers in the quarter. Disney Parks experiences and consumer products division saw revenues reach $7.2 billion dollars. During the quarter, double the $3.6 billion it generated in the prior year quarter. Here are the results. So earnings per share, we got in at $1.06 adjusted versus $0.63. Cents. Wow, that's a big beat. And revenue at $21.82 billion versus the expected $20.91 billion. So almost $1 billion more. And Disney Plus total subscriptions at $129.8 million versus the $125.75 million. So beating in all three numbers. Disney Plus subscriptions beat estimates even as executives previously said they expect subscriber growth for Disney Plus to be stronger in the second half of the year compared to the first, with original content being released on the platform in quarter 4, 2022. And here's hoping one of them is going to be Mandalorian. The subscriber number includes nearly 12 million Disney Plus subscriptions added in the first quarter. The service also saw average revenue per user in the US and Canada grow to $6.68 per month from $5.80 a year ago. Disney Parks Experiences and Consumer Products Division saw revenues reach $7.2 billion during the quarter, double the $3.6 billion it generated in the prior year quarter. The segment saw operating results jump to $2.5 billion compared to a loss of $100 million in the same period last year. Makes sense with all that's been going on in the world. Disney said the growth in revenue comes as more guests attended its theme parks, stayed in its branded hotels, and booked cruises. The company's consumer products business saw revenue fall 8.5% to $1.5 billion following the closure of a substantial portion of its Disney-branded retail stores during the second half of 2021. During the most recent quarter, Disney's domestic parks operated with fewer COVID-19 capacity restrictions. However, international locations continue to be impacted by mandatory capacity and travel restrictions, the company said. Additionally, although Disney's television and film productions have resumed, it is still experiencing disruption in its pipeline. While the studio's theatrical releases were among the top performing films of the year, the domestic box office still has not fully recovered from the pandemic. Income from Disney's co-production of the Marvel Cinematic Universe film Spider-Man No Way Home with Sony offset losses on the other title release during the quarter, which were unable to overcome significant marketing and production costs. In an interview with CNBC, CEO Bob Chapek said Disney is bidding for NFL Sunday Ticket, diving even deeper into streaming, and that would be awesome. They already have ESPN. And though Netflix shares fell during its most recent report when it showed slowing subscriber growth, Chapek reiterated guidance of 230 million to 260 million Disney Plus subscribers by 2024. And I often compare Disney to Netflix. We see Netflix getting a little bit of a bump after hours, probably as a result. Netflix, a market cap of 183 billion, especially after its recent sell off. Whereas Disney right now, we see it's up after hours, a market cap of 268 billion dollars. Honestly, I believe just as recent as December, both companies had a very similar market cap within a few billion dollars. And as a side note, I don't like Netflix because they're only a one trick pony. They don't have any really moat. There's so many other streaming companies out there and Disney, of course, with Disney Plus, with Disney being such a conglomerate, again, up after hours, roughly 7%, just shy of $160 per share. One person who must be smiling right now is Nancy Pelosi, who never seems to fail. Looking at the past year for Disney, we reached a 52-week high of $203 roughly a year ago. Since then, we are down 22%. However, it's going to be less now because of the earnings. Looking at the candlesticks, we had a low of about $130 a couple of weeks ago on the 24th of January, which seemed to be the bottom across the SPY and the NASDAQ. So today we had opened and closed on the daily, above the 20 EMA, but below the 50 EMA. When we zoom out, we see we had this uptrend ever since uh, the middle of 2020 that we broke through for a couple of weeks but but it looks like we're going to re-enter right back into it as we are currently right here at 160 dollars are we eventually going to be filling in this gap back at the bottom of uh, this uptrend that is anyone's guess and the last thing i want to mention is that we've been in this downtrend as well ever since uh, march of last year and i extended that downtrend and the previous uptrend 
And if we continue consolidating with these two trends meet, we're going to compress and either choose up or down. My guess, if I had to choose one, would be up because I am bullish on Disney. But absolutely anything can happen. We don't have to necessarily wait until these trends meet. We can move in any direction at any point before that. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these earnings? What do you think of Disney? Are you going to be buying it now after these earnings? Let me know. As always, like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.